Hey all, it is me, Insomniac Writer, and today I am going to be previewing the movie Feast, which I had somewhere here. It is here. And this movie is scary, jumpy, and hilarious all at the same time. And I was about to do 13 Ghosts, but I'm going to put that off until next time. But I really, really, really wanted to do this movie. I was doing something and I saw it. I was like, oh shit, this is on my list. So, here goes. There is something out there of all the bars to be stuck in. Unless you people want to die, you'll do what I say and you'll do it fast. They're coming. Right now. It's gonna eat us! We need help. SOS! SOS! Right now you can get ready to roll. Now who's with me? Come on! If we stay, we die. Less guns. This won't run out of ammo. Any question? I'm back, and I just finished watching Feast. And I know I did assure you and promise you that I would either preview 13 Ghosts or Ghost Ship. And I thank you guys for voting, but 13 Ghosts did win um, by a landslide. So that'll be my next review to do, um, and I will be posting that shortly. But anyway, um, Feast, I picked this because as I was cleaning and looking for something, <clears throat> excuse me, I found this, I saw it, and it was actually on my list of things that I wanted to do. A, because it is one of those lesser known movies and B, because it's a cult classic among the people who do know it. And even though it's kind of like mixed reviews or whatever, it still was a really good movie. I like it because the gore is on point and it has a good amount of laughs. Actually, I would consider this a horror comedy more so than Vamp, which was the last um, review that I did. Uh, this movie basically, it starts off introducing all these characters and a lot of them are cameos of people you recognize and people that are well noted uh and the next thing you know 10 minutes into the movie gore fest blood somebody gets decapitated and his face ripped off it's all types of shit going on like this movie just does not hold back at all like if you are into all that start it up right now i don't care about the people getting to know them and character build up then this is the type of movie you watch and i usually kind of steer clear of those types of movies because you don't connect with anybody but the way they introduce the characters like the first person that walks in um i think his name is bozo and he's played by balthazar getty they introduce him as the loser <laughs> no job no occupation yada 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 and it, then it shows the life expectancy and it pretty much introduces all of the people in this movie, which I think is about a dozen or so. I think it's yeah, about a dozen or so people. Um, and the next thing you know, it just jumps right into it. Um, the crazy thing about this movie is that it was one of the Project Greenlight winners from season three, which that used to be on Bravo, but I believe it's on HBO right now. And it spotlights and helps aspiring new filmmakers get you know, there are films out there, and it's one of those, that's the Matt Damon and Ben Affleck project, but either way, this movie is really good, good enough to spawn some sequels, too, I think. Anyway, uh, the movie stars Henry Rollins from the Rollins Band, Jay from Jay and Silent Bob, Tretch from Naughty by Nature, Krista Allen from Final Destination, and I actually went and I printed out the characters of everybody that was in because it was like, darn, I recognize that person, I recognize that person, and I said, you know what, let me actually get their names because <laughs> it's a lot of cameos, and I was like, oh, I recognize that person from this, from that, 
and I, and I couldn't remember their names, and it just kind of goes by so fast, and there's so many people. I was like, oh shit, I need to write this shit down. Um, another person that's notable is the bartender Clue Gallagher from uh, Friday. The, I'm sorry, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. He played the dad, and he was also in Return of the Living Dead, the movie I just reviewed the other day, and. He actually still looks the same. He still looks old and grumpy. He just all his hair is gray and white now. Uh, but the thing about this movie, it just doesn't let go. It just, like I said, within 10 minutes, it's already going at you. And the crazy thing about it was when I was watching it, I was just like, the first time I saw it, it's like, oh my God, I didn't expect that to happen. And this person died and that person died. Just like, holy shit. It was like, you really, this is one of the movies where I rarely talk to a film or at the screen when I'm watching something, but the first time I saw this movie, I was like, oh shit, like damn, damn, that's not stuff, oh, that's cool. And you think, like I said, like when it says the life expectancy of a person in a movie, yeah, it doesn't always plan out that way. Like they don't care. Like most most horror movies have rules. You don't kill kids, people in wheelchairs, a handicap, uh, you, you let the loser or the jerk bull survive. Well, I mean, die is just crazy. Like, it just, it takes all the cliches and just says, fuck it. And another thing that I like about it is that the monsters, you don't know where they come from. You don't know what they are, how they got there. You don't know if they're aliens or some freak experiment going wrong. And I don't know if the sequels go to explain what they are. But I do know that in the beginning of the movie, when you first see the creature in its entirety, the first one is like, I guess, a baby. And then the rest of them are real big, huge, bulky with this like fur all matted. And they have like skulls of animals on them. And it's, you see and you're like, Ew, what the heck is that? It doesn't even, at first you think, I'm like, oh God, this is some cheesy shit. Like it's probably somebody in a costume. And it kind of reminded me of... Um, that M. Light Shalaman, he knows his name, that movie, um, when they're in the woods and they're, and I can't even think of that film for some reason, when the guy's all dressed up as the monster in the woods trying to keep people in the little town, the village. And I'm thinking of that, but then when you see them bust out of there and you see what they really are, you're like, holy shit, these things is ugly and scary with the teeth. But this is kind of like, if you look, you can see this is what they look like. And they are really nasty. They don't play like they got these razor claws just gash through any and everything, bust through walls and windows. And like I said, immediately the people in the, the bar, the motley crew of people, they try to, you know, board up the windows and everything else and the doors. But eventually, they don't play. They And they're not stupid. They're not like totally instinct, you know, they going off instinct. They're really calculating animals. So this is one of those movies like it keeps you going it keeps you on the edge of your seat because you don't really know what's going to happen and everything happens really fucking fast so i would say check it out i liked it um because i just thought it was different it was one of the movies i said you know what let me check this out and get into it and i don't even remember how or why i got this dvd but i'm glad that i did a while ago um because this movie is about 10 years old and i still enjoy it to this day uh, there's not really a whole lot of nudity, if any. There's a sex scene, but you don't see anything. But the gore is what gets me. The special effects of that is just really, really good. And it's just a good, classic, fun horror movie with some funny parts, some good elements. And I guarantee you will enjoy it. But, like I said, I will be doing 13 Ghosts next, so I really have to get on the money. Um, my favorite character is Grandma. Now, that woman... In that movie, <laughs> she just sits there and drinks. She looks like she's half high. She reminds me of the, the old lady and uh, not me, myself, and I mean, that's just another movie it's just slipping my mind. You think I would have wrote this shit in, but she just, she's funny. She is hilarious. Something about Mary. That's who she reminds me of, that old lady in that movie. And I think it might be her, if I'm not mistaken. But she was so orange and burnt in that movie with the mar margaritas and the cucumbers on her face. Who the hell could tell? Anyway, um, again, you will enjoy this movie. Um, Henry Rollins is funny. Uh, the way he, I ain't even gonna lie, yes, he dies. But the way he goes out is just, you don't see it coming. So if you get a chance to check this out, stream it online or... Find an old DVD bin at Walmart or wherever, or order it. I recommend it. Good movie, good film, good horror movie. Well written, well played out.
quick, fast pace, and to the point, no bullshitting. Ten minutes into the movie, here comes the gore. But just before that, they introduce each character as their cliche type or trope in the movie. Like, you got the hero, you got the handicapped kid, you got the little boy, you got the old lady, the old man, you know, you got the loser guy. You got all these cliche character types, and it names it. And then it says, like, their life expectancy in this movie or the is good or not so good they basically show you that and even though they have a good life expectancy like you expect someone to live to the end they don't at all fuck are you unless you people want to die you'll do what i say and you'll do it fast <laughs> Mine's bigger than yours. Listen to me. A storm of hell's coming down on this place any second. I don't know what they are. I don't know where they came from. All I do know is that these fuckers are fast, nasty, and hungry. And there's four of them. They got claws like Ginsu knives and more teeth than a chainsaw. They're coming, right now. So we gotta lock this bar down. That means doors, windows, drains, and zippers, and we gotta do it fast. You, get a phone, call the cops, National Guard, townies, anybody who kicks ass, and get them out here. Any questions? Yeah, who the hell are you? I'm the guy that's gonna save your ass. Anyway, until next time, this is your girl, Insomniac Writer. And again, I want to thank you guys for showing me love on social media and on YouTube. You've been amazing, and I really appreciate it. And continue to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will be back soon with my next upload and movie, which... Until next time, guys, take care.